So the snow's starting to recede and thoughts are turning to planting. So today we're going to build some cold frames for our raised beds. Welcome to Barely Homesteading. This is Lumberjack and today we're going to be building some cold frames for our raised beds. Uh, these beds are about 4 by 12 feet long and wide. And we're going to be building uh, cold frames in three sections that we can lift off as the weather warms up and we can put them on as the weather gets cold. So our cold frames are going to be built out of 2x4s and 2x6s and then have a plastic top let the sunlight through and warm them up. Uh, we're going to slant that top so that if we do get some spring snows, it'll run off and not sit on the top and, and potentially break the cold frame. So first we're going to start with a box on the bottom. Two of the sides are going to be two by sixes, two of the sides are going to be two by fours. I want the bottoms of the two by sixes to sit below the two by fours. And that's going to sit inside of the raised bed and then on top of that box we're going to build uh, some slanted sides that we can attach our plastic uh, roofing to so that uh, we get um, as I said that slanted roof to let the rain and the snow run off. So let's get started. All right, so the bottom of the box is done. Now we're gonna cut the uh, sides at an angle, put a back on, and then we'll be able to put the roof on. To cut the uh, sides at an angle, I'm gonna cut it a length first, and then we're gonna go into the table saw to cut the angle. Now we're going to cut an angle uh, piece off the back that matches the angle of the sides so that when we put the closeouts for the corrugated plastic roof, it sits at the right angle uh, with the side pieces. And that angled, small angled piece that we cut off the back, we're going to put on the front uh, again so that we have a, a nice uh, angled piece to attach the back. The, uh, closeouts on the front. While we're here in the garage, we're going to go ahead and cut our corrugated plastic roof. A couple of things to note about these uh, that I've found uh, from working with them over the years. First thing is when you cut them, you want to make sure that they're warm. If this plastic gets cold, it gets really brittle, and as you're cutting it, it will chip or crack. And so you want to make sure it's warm so it's pliable. So uh, if it's cold in the winter or uh, late spring, make sure you bring it inside, let it acclimatize for quite a while so that it doesn't crack on you. And it can get quite a, a few big cracks if you're not careful. Uh, the next thing is it can be very challenging to cut a straight line on these uh, because of the corrugations. So you want to make sure you've got some long shears <clears throat> that are nice and sharp. And I found that the best way to do this is to go ahead and... want the, the side of the corrugation that's up 
so that that edge is coming up towards you. Go ahead and with just a pencil, mark where you want to cut. Go ahead and get a drywall square if you've got one. These work the best for this. Line that drywall square up on your cuts. And because this plastic is pliable, don't rely on the square. Actually do a cut on the front the, or a mark on the front and the back to be able to line that up rather than relying on that flexible plastic edge. Then you take your shears Rather than using a pencil, because the pencil as it goes up and down, because of the pencil point, is going to make a wavy line on that corrugation. So you take your shears and run that sharp edge along the square, and that will give you a nice straight line along those corrugations. And then it's just simply cutting along the line. All right, so now we've got the two pieces for our roof. So we'll go back outside, uh, build the top of the box with the angles, and then we can attach our roof pieces and we'll be just about done. Now, I wanted to make these cold frames small enough, which is why they're only about four by four, so that if I'm not around, my wife and one of the kids would be able to lift them up and off if they needed to. Uh, unfortunately for my work, I do have quite a few business trips that I have to take and sometimes have to work late. So I wanted to make sure that these were small enough that the kids, uh, along with my wife, would be able to get them on and off. So let's go ahead and get this top box done. So the front of this, uh, the front of the top of the box is attached pretty good because I was able to get all the way through. The back's a little too tall, so we're going to put some corner braces to attach the top to the bottom. Alright, so now let's cut the closeouts, get those attached, and we'll be ready to attach our plastic roofing. So when you're cutting these closeouts, you want to cut one and then use that as a template for the second one so that the crests and the valleys of the cutouts match on the top and the bottom of the cold frame. The other thing I'll mention about these closeouts is that I, for this particular project, I've cut them so that when I put the plastic corrugated roofing on, at the sides, the bottom or a valley of the corrugation is at the sides so that I can screw that down over here. If a crest was at the side, I'd have a big gap on the side. And again, I'm pre-drilling with the counter drill bit, especially on these closeouts. This wood is pretty thin in the valleys and is very easily split if you don't put a countersink in there. I 
I put the roofing on this and realized that sometimes we get some pretty heavy spring snows and I really don't want two feet of snow resting on the center of that plastic uh, roofing, that plastic corrugated sheeting with no support here in the middle. So I'm going to put a beam across here just to actually, yeah, I'm going to put a beam across here just to give it a little bit of support uh, if we do get one of those big spring snows. All right, got the brace in, now I'm ready to put the plastic on. You probably saw me kind of waffling back and forth about whether I wanted to, that brace to run horizontal or vertical on the box. And I still haven't made up my mind. I'm going to do this one with it running horizontal. I'm going to do the next one with it running vertical and see which one works better. That way we know, and in the future when we build more of these, uh, we'll do it uh, the way that works better. When putting on this corrugated plastic roofing, you want a special screw. It's got a built-in washer that has a rubber gasket underneath it. And the reason you want this typically is because that rubber gasket will seal the hole that the screw makes. For our cold frames, we're not as worried about that, but another thing that it does is it prevents you from running the screw in too far and damaging the plastic. So um, we're going to continue to use these on these cold frames. The other thing I'll say about these screws is uh, with the plastic, we want to make sure that we pre-drill a hole through the plastic. We don't have to make a countersink like we did uh, when we didn't want the wood to split, but we do want to pre-drill the plastic because we don't want the plastic to crack um, and so we're going to pre-drill the holes before putting these screws in. Because the closeouts are not pressure treated I'm going to take and overlap that plastic try to keep the, as much rain off as possible. All right, so got the roof on, ready to take it over and put it on the bed, see how well it fits. One thing that I did do that I didn't explain before is had a little bit of overlap or hang, overhang, I should say. And so we trimmed that off so that it doesn't get in the way of the next uh, cold frame that we put on. So let's go take this over to the garden and see how it works. So we got the first one for this bed done, two more, and it'll be ready to go. Uh, get the snow melted quicker and be able to plant sooner. So as I've talked about in an earlier video, the reason why we need these cold frames, uh, as opposed to some of the PVC and plastic frames that you may have seen uh, elsewhere, is because our climate here just can't support uh, the plastic and PVC. We get too much snow. Uh, which, as if you've got the plastic down, will just tear that PVC apart. 
We also have pretty high winds, which tends to uh, rip the plastic. And with the high UV up here at 8,000 feet, it degrades the plastic pretty fast. And so the, the PVC and plastic frames, we've tried uh, for a couple of years now, and they work all right once you have uh, the snow gone and uh, the last a, a couple of years before the plastic starts to degrade. But for something that we want to get started early, and our growing season is so short, we need to get things started as early as possible. We really need something more uh, rigid and strong like these cold frame boxes. So uh, we're going to get at least one bed of them this year and see how they work and make modifications so that we can make them better next year. So after a trip to the hardware store to get some more screws and to pick up another board after I cut one wrong, all three cold frames are in. And hopefully here in a couple of days with that trapping the heat, the, all the snow that's still in the raised bed will be melted. One thing that we noticed after we put these cold frames in the beds is that we didn't have any way to lift them off if we needed to get in to plant or water or weed. And so I've added these handles uh, to each on each side so that they're easy to lift on and off and make the beds accessible again. All right, so we've had the cold frames on the, this raised bed for a couple of weeks. The snow is all gone, and as you can see, we've got some things that are starting to pop up, uh, some weeds or some possibly some seeds from last year. And the soil is actually quite warm. And so now um, these cold frames are working out rather well. We're going to plant in them even though it's just the beginning of April <clears throat> because uh, they're doing so well. A couple of things that we've learned already with the snowstorms that have come is that the brace that I had uh, going both uh, either vertically or horizontally, uh, the horizontal option is the one that we need to go with. The weight of the snow on the vertical braces is too much and was actually bowing the plastic down. So we're going to fix the two that we did with the vertical brace and the future boxes that we'll do will all have the horizontal uh, the right to left <coughs> uh, braces. Uh, all in all, we're very pleased uh, with the cold frames and hopefully this will give us a couple of extra months of growing uh, up here at the high altitude. So with that, this is Lumberjack for Barely Homesteading. Use it up, wear it out, make it do or do without.